Welcome back, folks. Before we get started in this video, just wanted to let you know we had a little bit of an audio recording issue in the form of a very, very unhappy pup, and here's the culprit right here. This devil did not enjoy being in his kennel while Dad was out shooting and filming. So, if that annoys you, the incessant hound-like yelping and barking in the background, feel free to click away. But without further ado, here we go. Welcome back to American Arms Channel, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a great day today. It is Father's Day 2023, and we are out here enjoying a gorgeous day that God has made for us here on the plains of Nebraska alongside the Platte River. Now, we're getting a little bit long in the tooth for the day, but it's a perfect hour to put some things to the test and enjoy a little bit of shooting fun. I had a comment on a video where I introduced the Henry 44 Magnum color case hardened side gate carbine. Whew, that's a mouthful. We're just going to call it the Henry color case carbine. And the comment went along the lines of, you know, thanks for demonstrating that a 44 Magnum is really a brush gun or something like that, where effectively the, the, the comment was to say that a 44 Magnum carbine or rifle is a brush gun. It's a 75 yard and in gun, which I think that's pretty short range for a brush gun, unless you're talking about a shotgun. Uh, but um, even then, shotgun slugs with a well zeroed shotgun that shoots them well with a rifled or smooth bore can be highly effective and highly accurate out to 150, even 200 yards. And that's with foster slug. But I, I found that to, to be a little bit um, odd, say that this or this, with an optic on it, is only a 75-yard brush gun. Okay, well, the round has more than enough energy to dispatch game all the way out to 300 yards. There's going to be some significant drop there. But if you can put the round on target, is it really only a 75-yard gun or a 100-yard deer rifle? Now, we have two carbines, fortunately. I have my father's, which is equipped with a Leopold 1.5 to 5 by 20 VX3 HD, low power magnification optic. And this is a fantastic traditional styled optic that is lightweight and fits perfectly at home on this 44 Magnum carbine. My carbine is equipped with a Ranger Point Precision Ghost Ring sight. You can have smaller apertures for these sights as well, but both rifles are zeroed at 50 yards. And if you take a look at the ballistics of a 44 Magnum, zeroing at 50 with a full house load out of a 16 inch barrel should give you pretty much hold on to the vitals of a deer on a broadside shot and squeeze the trigger all the way out to 125, 130 yards. And at 150, hold a little high. So. What's the vital size of a deer? Well, it's about eight to 10 inches. Personally, I think that if you can put it inside of a 10 inch circle at any distance, you are putting it inside the vitals of most medium to large size white tail mule deer and especially elk. Today, I know that I can shoot pretty dang well with most of my equipment, but can we do well with a 44 Magnum carbine? What's the max effective practical range for a 44 Magnum carbine? And because we have identical rifles with identical loads, and the only difference being one has a magnified optic and one is running a ghost ring sight, let's see and put that to the test. Is a 44 Magnum carbine really only a 75 yard brush gun? Now what we're going to do is we're going to fire a 240 grain Hornady jacketed hollow point, it's an XTP, at 1725 feet per second average. We're going to start at 50 yards. We're going to fire two three round groups, one with the magnified carbine and one with the ghost ring sighted carbine. Then we're going to step out to 100 and shoot the steel plate with each rifle. Then we'll step out to 125, 150, 200, and we'll see if we can get farther than that. Now we will be laser range verifying with the Leopold RX-1600i. Anyhow, that is enough gabbing for now. Let's put rounds on target, see what kind of groups we can get, and then let's start marching on out and seeing how far we can make hits with these two carbines. Now, first up, we're gonna do the ghost ring carbine. I'm gonna aim at the center of my sight-in target at 50 yards, just because my eyes aren't quite precise enough 
for these sites at 50 to uh, to see the little sight in targets on each corner of that big circle. But uh, we'll take a look here. This is our 240 grain Hornady XTP. Again, that is being propelled by 24 grains of little gun. That is an out of the book load and actually is slightly under max. 1725 out of these carbines, highly effective deer load as I learned last year on three separate does at three different distances. And you can check that hunting video out on the channel as well. Isn't that just a gorgeous, gorgeous carbine right there? It will jam up though if you turn it a little bit wonky and uh, 1894s and Marlin 336s will also sort of do that sometimes if you don't have them perfectly lined up personal experience so let's put three rounds on target here try to save our brass here And the only thing helping me here is this tripod. And it's not the steadiest rest, but it helps a bit. All right, that was three. Now we're going to transition to the magnified carbine and go take a look at our groups. All right, another beautiful rifle. This has not had nearly as many rounds put through it as my carbine. This one has stayed pretty fresh in the box, waiting for dad to play with it some more. But there we go, we're gonna load that. We have it topped out at five power here. It should still be zeroed for 50 yards, but we are gonna check that out right now. There we go. Let's go check it out. All right, so for our ghost ring sighted carbine, we have a nice, beautiful, about a two and a half, three inch triangle right here. I'm going to say that that error is all me. This was my point of aim, and I may possibly have screwed that up. So, or it could be my sights are off. Um, I think the front sight might be a little bit too tall. I did run into this problem last year, but I did hunt with it. So the thing about a ghost ring is you have a pretty loose aperture. Great for quick shots, great for close range work. But if you're taking past, I would say, a 50 yard shot, you do have to be more conscious of where that front post is floating inside that ghost ring. And at distance, a lot of times you'll adjust that post to be higher in that ghost ring, at least that's how I shoot it. You could say that's wrong, but that's how I typically land a hit where I want it, is using that ghost ring as a reference for dialing in at a certain distance. But we've got a good group here nonetheless. Now with our optic equipped 44 carbine here, that is three shots. We have two on top of each other and one just right. As far as I could tell in the optic, the first two stacked and the third one going just right of that oblong hole was most likely me. At 50 yards, these rifles can be incredibly accurate. At 100 yards, they can be incredibly accurate. You just have to do your part. That is something to consider that, hey, it's not perfect and I'm shooting off of a tripod at 50 yards and we're landing that kind of a group inside of an inch with horizontal stringing so it's probably me that caused this to go out here this probably should be a perfect little clover leaf hole at 50. that is more than accurate for 100 yards if you keep extrapolating these groups this is sufficient out to about 125 this is sufficient probably about out to 200. remember if you're landing inside of that 10 inch circle you're going to be about in the green here and that's going to be the vital zone of a deer heart lungs diaphragm that's going to be the critical mass area, the boiler room as it were. So more than accurate enough, now let's step out to 100 and make sure that offhand we can hit the plate. All right, boys and girls. We are exactly 100 yards from the target and we have one in the chamber, we're topped off, so nine rounds total in each carbine. We're gonna see if I can hit the plate here at 100 yards easy with each carbine.
I do have a sling on my ghost ring carbine. It's going to make it a little bit easier for me, so I kind of got to cheat. One's got an optic. I can see the target better. One has a sling, so I can steady it better. Since I was hitting a little bit low, I will be sure to adjust my point of aim and my centering of my front post. But without further ado, let's see if I can make this work at 100 yards. Just under it. So, hmm. Looks like somebody might be right, but again, all depends upon how you set up your rifle, doesn't it? There we go. Second shot, just needed to hold a little bit higher. I think a slightly shorter front post and a slightly tighter aperture is in my near future for this carbine. It's been fantastic up close and out to 75 yards, but again, you gotta set your rifle up for the type of hunting you're going to do. This particular rifle is mostly a brush gun for me, so 100 yards and in, it's pretty much what I intended it for. Obviously, we can make that work. Let's swap to the optic carbine now. All right, here's the optic carbine. I'm gonna dial her down to three power. We have one in the pipe. We're zeroed at 50. We should be able to just hold right on that plate. First shot hit. Let's give it one more for good measure. Try not to lose my very elusive 44 Magnum brass. I got a good amount of it, but man, it's hard to come by. Felt a little bit left and high, and that's exactly where I landed on the plate. But you know what? That's a dead deer twice in a row. Let's step her on out to 125. We're out here at a buck 25. Let's see what I can get done with the ghost ring sight carbine. Just under it, yet again. So I think this story is mostly going to be if you can see the target better with your sights, how well you can hit at distance. Oh, just under it yet again. Might have set that one off a touch early. If I can't get this on my third shot here, I'm gonna give up and go to the optic carbine. Come on, Drake, let's put it together here. Hmm, no clue. So, have we drawn the limit on open sights at 100 yards for this kind of carbine? Most likely for many shooters, including myself currently. I think with a finer tipped front sight post that is better sighted in at 50 yards, I will do better with this, especially with a slightly finer peep. But excuses are excuses. That's pretty much the limits for me in this carbine currently, at least offhand. We might try it off the tripod. So I'm gonna push this up to four power and let's see what we get with the optic carbine. There it is. One hit at 125. Now I can shoot again. Let's back it out to 150. We'll try it with the Ghost Ring Sight Carbine, but I most likely will not be able to hit it again. This guy is gonna be doing our work from here on out. But let's see what happens. 150 yards exactly. Let's see if I can get it done once or twice with the Ghost Ring Sight offhand. <laughs> there we go okay so practice makes perfect obviously i got horse flies biting me oh <sighs> can i do that again do i want to try and do that again i don't know let's take a look i 
think that was just under and to the right. Let's give it one more shot at 150. She's empty. Well, that doesn't help, does it? Just under it, maybe just over it. We're in the ballpark. I wonder why we got a soft hit on that first one. First strike on that, maybe just a bad primer. Well, this guy is out of ammunition and I'll have to go retrieve some more unless I start, actually, I could just start pulling from this, couldn't I? Why don't I do that? I don't know. I don't know, because I'm just not that smart, I guess. All right, let's put one more round on target. See what we can get. If I can hit it two out of three times. Mmm, felt like it was just under it yet again. So, we can make hits if we know what we're doing with the optic or the sighting system and how to shoot the rifle. Let's go to the optic carbine. See if we can make a first round hit here. I'm gonna push it up to five power. Again, we're at 150 yards. All right, first round hit. We can kill a deer at 150. Let's see if I can hit it yet again. I felt that one go right. That was me. That was high, that was me. This is all me, folks, I can feel it. I can feel it. Off hand at 150, the 44 carbine's not the easiest. There we go. That's much better. We got one round left in the gun. We'll have to top her off a little bit. Let's push out on a 200. We're just gonna use the optic carbine from now on because I doubt my skills and if you doubt it, Probably not going to do so great. So I need to practice more with my ghost ring sights. I might adjust my tool a little bit. But for now, we know we can effectively make hits at 150 yards. Let's see if it can be a 200 yard deer gun. So we are here at exactly 200 yards. We're going to top off our rifle. Magnification's at five power. I would take a knee to help out, but the grasses are just high enough now that I'd pretty much be skimming the round almost all the way down range at this distance it's probably going to be a bit of drop so i'm going to favor pretty high as long as i hold steady and i hold the drop right i know we're going to hit this plate as long as a horse fly doesn't bite me right while i'm trying to take the shot <laughs> oh let's see what i can do hi Held too high. Just a touch low. All right, third one's the charm, hopefully. Oh, just underneath it again. All right, we're gonna transition to shooting off the tripod and see if we can land a first round hit in that way. All right, here we go. We're gonna cinch the tripod down a little bit just to get me a little bit more steady. <sighs> just under it. This is where it really starts dropping out of this 16 inch barrel. There it is. There it is. Just over. That's me, I felt it be high. Let me grab one more round. 
All right, here we go. One last round. Well, as we can see here, we were dancing all over the, the plate in a nice six inch circle for the most part when we were hitting it. And a couple of the shots that felt like they were just nicking it. We hit one here at the top of the plate and one here over at the edge. But we do know that most of our hits and some of our more centered ones were most likely coming from that 100 and 125 yard mark. I will say that most of the rounds that missed seem to be carrying right or a little low. And I could see that there is a trough right below here dug into this dirt pile. So that tells me that, uh, you know what, we just need to know our dope. All but the 200 yard shots off the tripod were obviously offhand. There's a lot of human error that can go into that. I own that 100%. I suck. I need to get better. And that's why you practice. But having an optic on your carbine obviously takes it to the next level. For most people and most people's eyes, I would say that the standard buckhorn sights or a peep sight or ghost ring sight is really going to make the gun the most practical at about 100 to 150 yards. And for a lot of guys, yeah, that 50 to 100 yard range is the outside limits of a brush gun, if that's what they're considering this carbine to be, or the rifle variant of it to be. But all in all, we do see that mechanically, the rifle is definitely capable of tight groups and of sufficient accuracy to deliver high energy potential on the target. So really, it comes down to how you set up your firearm, how good you are at shooting it, and understanding the dope of your cartridge, just like you would with a precision rifle. This is no different. If it's capable of good feats of accuracy, you can definitely take a deer. But yes, for most people, it'll be a 100-yard gun. For those that like a challenge and who are very well versed in their carbine though, there is no reason to say that this is only a 75 yard gun. This can definitely be a 200 plus yard deer getter. Now, as always guys, I appreciate your support of the channel by leaving comments, hitting like, and if you haven't and you'd like to stay up to date on everything we do here, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when the next adventure is posted. As always, guys, I'm Drake. God bless. Keep your powder dry. I'll see you in the next one.